Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I have an absolutely awesome video for all you small form factor fans today because I have scoured the internet trying to find every single slim 120mm fan that I could find in order to work out which one is the best for your build. So amazingly there are nine of them out there i had no idea there were there were that many there's some uh some from companies that i've heard before and others that i've not really dealt with before but nine we've got so nine i'm actually going to test and today the aim is to find out which ones offer the best airflow which ones offer the best noise to performance ratio as well and which ones are the cheapest and which ones ultimately you should be buying for your build. And of course, small form factor is where a lot of the attention will be with these fans. And the reasons I'm gonna go into now, in case you haven't got any idea what a slim 120 millimeter fan is, basically it is one of these. And as you can see here, hopefully I'll do some uh, close-ups uh, so you can see just the difference. But a slim 120 millimeter fan, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It is slimmer than a normal 120 millimeter fan. So here we've got a normal one versus a slim one on the right and uh, or your left. And as you can see, there's a pretty big difference in the depth. It is usually around 10 millimeters. So a whole centimeter of extra space or clearance or whatever you want to call it that you will get in your case. And this has a whole bunch of different benefits. So for me personally, I've been using these things, actually these very fans here, the uh, the Noctua NF-A12 uh, times 15. That's one of the first uh, slim fans to actually come out on the market. And what I use them for is to basically fit fans and fans and radiators in places that I otherwise couldn't. So for example, two of the most recent Mini ITX builds that I did, the Fantex Shift water cool build, that insane 7,000 pound Mini ITX water cool build, I did, hopefully you can see a link to that up above and I'll do some coverage now for you to take a look at that build. And essentially that build would not have been possible without these fans because I fitted them in between the chassis and the side panel. I got the side panel machine cut so it had some vents in there. And um, I'm glad to see that lots of people have kind of taken that design and, uh, and run with it as well. So always good to, uh, to see what you guys can do with that case and following on from uh, the setup that I had. And uh, also in another situation with the Ragentech Ophion Evo, another one of my favorite mini ITX cases, usually you can only fit a single 240 millimeter radiator in the roof. And uh, again, you can see that case or that project, should I say, up in a banner at the top if you want to if you want to check it out. Absolutely fantastic build. And with that case, I was able to fit another radiator and a fan in the bottom of the case as well. So instead of just a 240 millimeter radiator with a single row of fans, I could fit both that and another 120 millimeter radiator and a single fan in the bottom as well. And as yet, I haven't seen anybody else actually do that. So for me, slim fans are kind of part and parcel of small form factor builds, and I'm amazed that more people out there haven't been using them, especially some high-profile YouTubers. They should, they should know better if they're, if they're promoting builds like these. And for me, the great benefits come from the fact that A, they don't perform that much less in terms of airflow and static pressure and all that kind of stuff compared to their full height equivalents which means that you don't lose that much performance by using them. The, uh, the Noctua fan that I've got here, for example, I tested myself against one of Noctua's own full height fans, and you were getting very close to some of the same performance. It wasn't quite as good, but it wasn't far off either. And if you're nearly as good as one of Noctua's full height fans, you're doing pretty well anyway. And of course, what I've just mentioned is that for my own benefits with water cool builds, a lot of the time it's meant the difference between being able to water cool a mini ITX build that's got super slim clearances and not water cooling it. So it's literally that night and day in terms of the benefits uh, that these fans offer over their thicker ones. And if you combine these with some of the super slim radiators out there, such as the XSPC TX series, you've got a fan and a radiator and a radiator in just 35 millimeters of clearance. That that's thinner than most radiators, or even just as thin as some of some of the thinnest radiators out there from from companies. So super super useful tools in building your pc especially if it's a space tight or space deprived should i say mini itx or small form factor builds so what we'll be doing today then is running through um each 
of these fans and we'll be benchmarking them in a minute. Of course, I'll run through my test system about how I will actually be doing that. And also we'll be looking at the airflow, the noise, and uh, obviously the value as well. So noise, obviously super important for a mini ITX build because mini ITX PCs tend to be much closer to you on your desk. So if you're having similar noise levels to an ATX rig, then you're going to be wanting to have that, have, have the, the quietest fans possible. So if these fans are um, screaming away like tornadoes, you generally don't want those uh, types of fans in your build. Equally, airflow is very, very important because you want to know that these fans are actually able to deal with radiators and that kind of thing. So with that in mind, my test system uses a 120 millimeter radiator with a, uh, an airflow meter and an enemy meter out the other side measuring the airflow. So that's a great test of static pressure of that fan and just how much air is, it is gonna be able to shift through something like a radiator out the other side, which of course is gonna be beneficial to your cooling. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it from a testing point of view, the actual hardware, but the actual testing results, what I actually wanna go through is getting each fan tested at full speed. Um, obviously, they're, they're all different full speeds with these fans. I think there's, there's probably like uh, seven or eight different maximum RPM uh, readings for the fans. And the reason for that, even though it's not directly comparable, is that basically in a mini ITX case, you want to have the ability to ramp up the cooling and ramp up the airflow when you need it. If it's a hot day or you've got a really high-end PC crammed into your um, mini ITX system, even if it's undervolted, you still want to have the airflow there when you need it. So that's one reason why I want to test every fan at full speed, because if a fan, for example, is only able to top out at 11, uh, 11 or 1200 RPM, that's maybe not going to be enough for you on a warm day or if you're benchmarking or rendering or something like that. So I just always like to have that extra bit of headroom, even, even if I only rarely use it, because obviously, obviously it's going to ramp up the decibels. Obviously, we want to try and get a direct comparison. So I will be testing each fan in addition to full speed. I will be testing it at 1000 RPM as well. And to do that, I've got a tachometer, which, you can, which will measure the speed of the fan blades. I, don't, I generally don't want to trust the software alone that I'll be using, so I've got a tachometer as well to make sure every fan is, is held at 1000 RPM to make sure that it is an even test across all the fans. So not only can we find out which fans have the best airflow in terms of maximum performance, we can find out which ones are the most efficient, at least at 1000 RPM as well. And we'll be doing noise tests at both the speeds as well, of course. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at each of these fans really, really quickly and uh, just see who we've got in terms of the players. And then what I'll do is just go through a couple of them just to show you what they've actually got in the box because um, a couple of them do have some interesting additions. The rest, basically, you get a bunch of screws and that's it. So I won't spend too much time doing this. Um, to start with, though, I have to mention the Noctua NF A12 Times 15. Um, a really, really great fan. I've been using it myself for a couple of years. And thank the Lord that um, <laughs> Noctua has come out with a black version of this because I've even had to spray these things in the past because they just didn't fit in with this particular color. But as we'll see in a minute, Noctua has come with a black version. So yay for that. So that's uh, this is obviously the standard Noctua colors. You might prefer that. They do that as well. And um, yeah, there's a whole other cool things that come in the box, which we'll get to in just a second. So I will put that there. And I uh, hope, you, hope you're liking my purple NZXT H1 as well. I'm still waiting for my repair kit from NZXT, by the way. But um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But I still love this case. And with the custom purple paint job that I put on it as well in NZXT purple, it looks absolutely fantastic. So anyway, let's crack onto the fans. And this is the Akasa. Very, very similar to a, I think it's a Roswell fan in the US, so identical fan. Looks identical, same uh, static pressure reading, same maximum RPM, etc, etc. They are the same fan, basically. So in the links below, you can find um, every single fan that I've tested here, or most of them, I think. So you can use the buy links to go ahead and buy the fans. And uh, yeah, pretty good looking fan. It feels a bit flimsy. The blades are very flimsy, uh, but we'll have to wait and see how it goes in terms of performance. Not a lot else included in the box, really. Gloss black, if that makes a difference. So that's the um, Akasa Slim Fan. Obviously, as I mentioned, very, very similar to a Roswell Slim Fan that's available in the US. One fan that I really did want to mention and look at what, is, what, is, what we've got in the box is the ID Cooling N01215 XT ARGB. Bit of a mouthful there, but it is the only fan on test to actually include 
RGB lighting of any sort. It's actually digital here. You've got the three pin RGB connector. Um, actually, it looks pretty cool. I've actually used this in a, uh, a build recently to clear some chipset vents in the Maximus, uh, some not Maximus, Crosshair 8 Impact in a build. Um, I'll see if I can get some um, B-roll of that showing you now just what this fan actually look, looks like. It actually looks really good. PWN connector, but also one of my favorite things to find in the box that is super, super rare at the moment. Slim fan size screws for radiators, yay! So that's one of the, my main issues with um, slim fans is that what the hell do you do when you're trying to mount it to a radiator? Because you can't use the included radiator screws. Um, so you either have to buy your own or you have to, what I've done in the past is just use a Dremel and just lop off, you know, a centimeter or so of the, of the screws. And that way you get them to fit on your radiator without that screw head just burying itself into your radiator fins and channels and potentially causing leaks. So I would highly recommend that you maybe just make sure that you have screws because there's nothing worse than having your, your entire build sat in front of you on a Friday night to only find that you haven't got the screws to mount the fans to the radiators. So just avoid that and uh, get your get your screws ahead of time for wherever, wherever you want to get them from. And for people like Noctua and those kind of people um, test, you know, offering up these fans at premium prices, guys, include radiator screws for heaven's sake. You know, just make our lives easier as enthusiasts so we can strap your slim fans to the things that we actually want to be strapping them to, which is radiators in our small form factor rigs. So, you know, just include the screws. It's not, it's not difficult. I would much rather pay a dollar or two extra for a fan that came with radiator screws that didn't bury themselves into my radiator. Anyway, and also I don't think it should be up to radiator manufacturers to do that either, because obviously it's such a niche thing that we're dealing with here. But yeah, anyway, include the screws, fan manufacturers. So next one is the Silverstone um, FN124. Again, you can find links to all these fans in the description below on Amazon. And um, this one looks suspiciously like the Arctic fan, which we'll get to in a minute. So the FN124 uh, feels reasonably premium. Very, very smooth feeling bearing there. There's, there's virtually no like move, um, like force or anything generated from that. Very, very smooth feeling. Actually a pretty good quality fan. Um, the fan blades, again, they're like sort of double reinforced there. So hopefully reducing vibrations. I don't think there's anything particularly interesting in the box. You get some anti-vibration mounts, but they're not obviously gonna be any use to you if you're trying to mount them to a radiator. So that's Silverstone fan number three. This one, the Prolima Ultra Sleek Vortex 12, only 15 millimeters thick, etc., etc. This fan, I actually had quite a bit of trouble finding on the internet. In the end, I actually got it off eBay. I knew it existed because I've seen it a few years ago, but you will probably find uh, that you have similar troubles as well. Um, you'll probably have to go to eBay to find this. Include a includes a Molex to four pin fan adapter. Kind of funky design, but I've never found these these kind of blades, these super flat, super short blades, to be that particularly efficient, really. And of course, there's lots of wasted space at the ends. So yeah, not too keen on the design of this. I just haven't had good good experiences with that kind of fan design in the past. But happy to be proved wrong, of course. So next up, I'm just gonna try and put these fans away as I do it, because otherwise I'm just gonna end up with a mass of boxes and not know anything where anything goes here. So uh, that's the uh, the trouble with doing group tests on camera, but never mind. So yeah, I mentioned that the Silverstone fan looked a bit like this. It actually it is actually quite a different design having them side by side. I can actually see the differences now. It doesn't feel that well made if I'm if I'm honest. Um, I know that this fan is quite popular with small form factor enthusiasts because it's a lot cheaper than the Noctua. We'll look at the prices again in a second. It just feels like there's a lot of wobble in that in that bearing and the blades are super super thin as well. You can kind of feel that kind of tinniness uh, there with the fan, but. If it performs and is quiet, I don't care because it's cheap as well. So um, let's get that one in its box and uh, we move on to the next one. So another company that I'm really glad to see supporting the slim scene is AlphaCool. So they actually sell some slim radiators themselves. Can highly recommend those. I've used those in lots of builds and I kind of like the design of this fan as well. It's got a like a distinctly square sort of outline and uh, the fan feels pretty good again the blades on on this are super super flimsy and they're gloss as well which might gloss it's like gloss blades but with a matte black body it's kind of 
yeah, not a whole load of attention to detail in terms of aesthetics here. But again, if it if it performs and it's reasonably priced as well, then I then honestly I don't care. So yeah, pretty good looking fan there from Noctua. Noctua, Alpha Cool. And the next one is another fan that I've seen in small form factor circles is the Scythe. What is the name of this again? Um, I thought I'd actually memorized it, but I haven't. <laughs> the Scythe Kaze Flex 120 Slim. Not particularly innovative in terms of the name there, but I actually think this is a really premium looking fan. Um, in fact, I think it's probably the best looking one here, apart from maybe the ID cooling one with its RGB lighting. I really, really like that one. It's got anti-vibration mounts, reasonably priced. I think it was so-so yeah, compared to the Noctua, but I really, really like it. It's got solid feeling fan blades, decent feeling bearing as well, and the anti-vibration mounts always, uh, always beneficial, of course. And I think it just kind of, it's kind of got that clean, premium, industrial look about it. I, I just, I just, I just really like it. So. Nothing much to mention in the box apart from a uh, an extension cable for the uh, the fan, a PWM extension cable, but that's about it. Now with that one, I am gonna, yeah, not gonna try and attempt to get that one in this box. It took me like 10 minutes earlier. So another fan with, um, actually no, it doesn't have lighting. <laughs> I remember this one earlier when I was doing um, like my semi script uh, for my video and I remembered that when it said UV blue, I thought, ah, oh, cool, another fan with lighting. It doesn't have lighting, it's only UV reactive. So you would need, a UV light in your case to actually get this thing glowing, which most of us don't have these days. Uh, we did used to, but we don't anymore. UV's kind of just not there anymore, is it really? So yeah, this one again, suspiciously like the Alpha Cool fan. So again, you know, you can see that very square outline and uh, very flimsy blades. It's basically the exact same fan as the Alpha Cool fan, except we've got the blue fan blades, which are UV reactive. Will be interesting, actually. Randomly, I've got these two back to back in the uh, in the pile here. So the noise level rating on the Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue is uh, what we're looking at, the noise rating. And interestingly, that's different. It's 24 decibels for the Gelid, um, 32 for the Alpha Cool. Maybe Gel is just lying there. Or Gelid, 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 what do you say? I don't know. I've always called it, called it Gelid for some reason. I don't know why. Probably got jelly on the mind. And fan speed for the uh, Gelid is 1500 RPM, but up to 1800 RPM for the Alpha Cool. So if they are the same fan, looks like they're gonna be spinning at different speeds, which will be interesting. So, Last but not least, stay, is the Noctua NF A12 times 15, and this is the PWM version. And we have a black fan from Noctua, thanks guys. So yeah, a really, really solid fan. You can see that bearing, just epic Noctua build quality here. Everything is solid, fantastic feeling bearing. You get an extension cable for the PWM uh, connector there. Obviously very, very short here, but again, that means that you can potentially sort of create your own cables and have a super short connector here. So again, um, not to uh, just thinking of everything really. It's uh, really, really cool to see that. And um, as well as the usual gubbins, you get a set of, I forget what these, what these are called now. Are they ascent packages or something? Let me have a look on the box. Yeah, just like anti-vibration mounts basically. But you get them in a whole range of colors. So you've got blue, black, green, yellow, and white. And basically what these things do, these little stickers, is they slot into the, uh, just around the fan mounting holes uh, to allow uh, just basically anti-vibration gubbins basically. But it's nice to see them in different colors. So at least you can kind of customize the otherwise bland black fan. So that, is it from the fan sort of roundup in terms of unboxings and that kind of stuff. What we'll do now is go into some detail on the benchmarking and we can take a look at those numbers.
Right, so first of all we need to get a, a grip on how much each fan actually costs and uh, what I'll do is if I've uh, actually got space to talk about things I will have the pricing fixed here on the left so you can just reference that when we're going through and talking about the results because obviously um, value is very very important if the fans are costing you know three or four times more than uh, than others then they'll then you'll want to see much much better performance in terms of airflow and noise from those fans so I'll try and keep the uh, the price in dollars uh, over there on the left and of course you can see links to all the fans that I've tested in the description below so if you want to check them out that would uh, point you through to Amazon and uh, those are affiliate links so you'll be contributing to helping support the channel by doing that and Moving on to the airflow results first then, we've got the full speed and a thousand RPM results. Both of these important for reasons that I've spoken about earlier. The full speed you'll want to consider if you need um, to have some serious airflow in certain situations such as gaming or rendering or something like that. Or just having that headroom to deal with high heat loads perhaps on, on warm days or if you're quite limited in terms of the cooling in your case maybe you've only managed to fit a, uh, a single 240 millimeter radiator in there and you need to make the most of that space um, in terms of airflow so uh, and then down at the bottom we've obviously got the thousand rpm which is generally what i tend to have my fans running at most of the time so uh, you probably won't want to have your fans running at a thousand rpm at full speed because that will be quite limiting especially if they're able to do you know 1800 or 2000 rpm at full speed you're losing a lot of performance there but Again, 1000 RPM is a good ballpark figure to see which fans are most efficient at that, at that specific speed. Now, they might not be as efficient at higher speeds. Um, unfortunately, I only had time to test 1000 RPM rather than several other speeds, but I think, um, I think that the results here are still worthwhile. So at full speed then, we've got the Noctua NF A12 times 15 um, at the top, and obviously no surprises there, I, I already knew that that fan was uh, was very, very good in terms of the peak airflow that it offers. And um, also with that peak airflow of uh, 1.72 meters a second through that radiator is this Scythe Kaze Flex 120 Slim and also the AlphaCore SL15. So dropping down a little bit is the Roswell Ultra Slim Fan, which is basically the same as the Akasa Slim Fan. Dropping down a little bit further is the Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue. So a pretty good result there for, for that fan, considering it costs just $8, uh, which is less than half the Noctua fan costs. And um, going further down the stack then, the uh, the Arctic, yeah, not, not a terrible result there. I mean, 1.4... Uh, 1.43 meters a second uh, isn't too bad at full speed, but obviously not quite as much headroom as the best performing fans on the test. And um, unfortunately, at full speed, the ID Cooling um, N0 12015-XT and the Silverstone FN124 clearly not offering uh, particularly potent performance at full speed. Then uh, moving on down to the 1000 RPM airflow graph then, and we've got uh, the uh, Roswell Ultra Slim Fan, uh, which is again the same to same as the Casa Slim Fan, plus the Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue, UV Blue Fan, and the Prolimitec Ultra Sleek Vortex 12, all performing, um, or all getting a 1 meters a second through that radiator at 1000 RPM and just short of that is the Noctua NF A12 times 15 the Scythe Kaze Flex 120 Slim again and uh, the AlphaCool SL15 so again the Noctua, the Scythe and the AlphaCool performing pretty well there considering that they also topped the full speed airflow graph and um, again the worst performing fans on test there were the ID Cooling Again, um, not really performing that great. The Silverstone FN124, again, a, a pretty pretty mediocre result for that one. And uh, the Arctic slipping a little bit, so that um, that efficiency there, just not great with the, uh, with the Arctic fan. So that's it for the airflow results, so let's move on to something else. So now we are looking at the noise testing and uh, what we want to see here are some nice low numbers rather than the higher numbers for the airflow. And uh, at 1000 RPM, we'll start off with the, uh, the lower figure this time, the Arctic P12 Slim is actually by far the quietest 
fan on test. So earlier we were obviously looking at the airflow numbers and the Arctic didn't actually perform that well there and that's in part due to its uh, its RPM and the fact that it was actually very, very quiet. So while it doesn't produce amazing airflow at 1000 RPM, it is significantly quieter than all the other fans on test. So if we're looking at some of the more premium fans though, the Noctua NF A12 times 15 and the uh, the Prolimatech um, Ultra Sleek uh, Vortex 12 and the Roswell Stroke uh, Akasa fans and the Scythe Kaze Flex, they're all reasonably loud compared to the likes of the Arctic fan, which was very, very quiet. So yes, those fans do offer significantly more airflow, but that airflow comes at the cost of noise, at least at 1000 RPM. So if we move up to the next uh, noise rating, which is of course at full speed, and uh, we can see here that the, where are we, the Noctua fan actually performing reasonably well compared to a lot of the other fans at full speed. So despite having one of the best uh, airflow numbers, it only produced 55 decibels at reasonably close range. And again, the Silverstone fan, not great in airflow, but uh, very, very good on the noise level. It was uh, one of the quietest fans on test here. Um, the Arctic fan also reasonably quiet, and uh, also quiet at uh, at the lower speed of a thousand RPM, and uh, moving up the graph, then we're starting to see um, some some of the fans that will generate significant noise at higher speeds. So they include the Scythe Kaze Flex, uh, 61 decibels there. So by far and away the noisiest fan on test, and um, then the Roswell and Akasa fan that that sort of interesting shaped fan blade, um, obviously producing a, a decent amount of airflow in some tests, but obviously with a significant amount of noise as well. The same with the Alpha Cool fan and uh, also the Gelid Slim 12 UV uh, Blue as well at 56 decibels. So obviously the three best performing fans here, the Silverstone FM124, ID Cooling N0 or NO12015 XT and the Noctua as well. So they were the best performing fans here. Now, obviously, you want to consider airflow and noise at the same time to work out which fans are actually performing the best in terms of delivering more airflow for uh, for lower noise, basically. So what I've done is basically combined those two sets of data in a calculation to work out uh, which fans are the most efficient at both 1000 RPM and at full speed. So starting with 1000 RPM, it's the Roswell Ultra, Ultra Slim fan, um, which is the same as the Akasa fan, and that is um, the best, or at least had, had it had the best efficiency at 1000 RPM alongside the Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue and the Prolimatech Ultra Sleek Vortex 12. So the Noctua, very, very close behind um, in terms of that calculation, along with the Scythe Kaze Flex 120 Slim and the Alphacore SL15. So basically what we're seeing here is how much airflow you're getting for the noise that the fans are producing. So um, the worst performing fans here are the Silverstone FN124 and the ID Cooling fan as well, not producing a whole load of airflow for the noise that they're producing. And also the Arctic P12 Slim, not particularly efficient there either. The um, Basically, the alpha call and upwards uh, were much, much more efficient. So that's at 1000 RPM, but what about full speed? This is where we want to see the best airflow for the, for the least noise. And unsurprisingly, the top result came from the Noctua NF A12 times 15 with the, uh, the highest uh, noise to airflow ratio, followed very closely by the alpha call SL15 and the Scythe Kaze Flex. So... So yeah, so basically what we're looking at there are first, second and third place at full speed to Noctua, Alpha Core and Scythe, followed pretty closely by Roswell uh, slash Akasha, uh, sorry, Akasa, um, and the Gelid and Pro Limitech fan. And again, the Arctic 
P12 Slim just getting in there as well with a result of 0.026 on the uh, on the ratios. So again, this ratio is just just an arbitrary figure. There are no kind of units there. You're just looking at airflow versus noise. So it's kind of an arbitrary figure, but it still gives us a nice table here so we can see which fans are the most efficient at full speed and at 1000 RPM. Okay, so the final calculations that I've done are working out the actual value in terms of airflow for each fan. So what I've done here is uh, worked out essentially how many meters, or sorry, actually no, it's the other way around, isn't it? How many dollars you're having to spend per meters second of airflow. So uh, obviously the cheaper fans here are going to do much better. Um, but that, as we've seen, isn't the whole story because the more expensive fans will generally have uh, better, air, better, sorry, better noise uh, to cooling ratios. They'll have lower, um, lower noise for your for your airflow, and they might come with extra accessories. For example, the Noctua fan comes with fan adapters and a whole bunch of uh, noise um, uh, anti-vibration mounts that are also coloured and that kind of thing. So there are other things that you'll have to consider here, but. At full speed, though, the Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue, obviously very, very cheap, um, not particularly well made, it has to be said as well, but it does offer the best bang for your buck, um, costing just $5.59 uh, per meter second of airflow. And then uh, following down that graph, the next best fan in terms of value is the Alpha Cool SL15, followed by the Arctic, then the side cars a flex, then Noctua slap bang there in the middle, followed by the ID cooling, Roswell stroke Akasa, uh, Silverstone, and in last place is the Pro Limitech. So the despite some reasonable results for that Pro Limitech fan, it's, it's just too expensive really. It costs a heck of a lot more than many of the other fans on test. Um, dopping, dipping down to a thousand RPM though, and uh, for every meter second of airflow again the super cheap uh gelid slim 12 uv blue is uh retail it will cost you eight dollars per meter second of airflow and very very well but similar in many ways uh going down the graph the alpha cool second again the roswell slash akasa fan actually rises way up the table here and the side cause flex though again in fourth place followed closely by the akasa uh, sorry, not Casa, Arctic P12 Slim, and also the Noctua again with a decidedly mid table result. Okay, so let's go through all those results and come to some quick conclusions then about each fan. And uh, I have to say, the best premium choice if you want the best in terms of noise to airflow ratios, the best airflow if you need that extra headroom, and uh, just premium build quality, etc, etc. No surprises here, it is the Noctua NF-A12 times 15 So it had the best full speed airflow versus noise, it had the best full speed airflow, and uh, also pretty decent performance at 1000 RPM as well, where it was also relatively quiet. So if you need the very best all-round slim 120 millimeter fan out there it is the Noctua so the next one that I thought would be interesting to talk about is the Scythe Kaze Flex 120 slim uh, it keeps up with the Noctua in most tests it is also cheaper but it, it is also significantly louder at full speed so that will probably uh, mean that I would I would definitely spend the extra to get the Noctua just because it's that much quieter at full speed if full speed operation is important to you. Otherwise, the Scythe Kaze Flex, if you're going to be reining in that full speed, is potentially a slightly better value option than the Noctua as long as you keep away from that full speed where it won't quite make your ears bleed, but it is significantly louder than the Noctua fan. So... I didn't honestly expect to say this, but the best cheap choice here is the Gelid, and that is the Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue. Um, you can't really argue, though, at just $8 for a slim fan, and uh, you get pretty good airflow at 1,000 RPM, and uh, reasonable at full speed as well, but it is usually mid-table at best everywhere else, and is quite noisy at full speed as well, but at less than half the price of the Noctua 
fan, uh, obviously it's going to cost you a heck of a lot less to kit your system out with a whole bunch of these than it is the Noctua. So it is worth, it is definitely worth considering if you're looking to just get the the best bang for your buck in terms of a slim fan. Um, an alternative cheap choice is the Alpha Cool, that is the SL15. And good full speed airflow here, noise to airflow ratio also good and um, good value as well at uh, how, are, how are we looking at on price, $14 for this one. Um, however, again, it is pretty noisy at full speed. Uh, the Roswell slash Akasa, uh, good airflow and efficiency at 1000 RPM, but very, very noisy at full speed. And it is also quite expensive, um, $20. It costs the same as the Noctua fan, so no surprising which one I would actually go for there, of course. Uh, the Prolimatech, which is the ultra sleek Vortex 12, if you can actually find it, which you probably can't at the moment. I just I managed to find one on eBay and just thought I'd include it so I can include as many fans as possible. It is very expensive at $25, and unfortunately, it doesn't match that price with performance or efficiency or anything, really. It's very noisy and usually offer just mid-table results at best. Next, though, is another alternative cheap choice, which is the Arctic uh, P12 Slim PWM. Uh, not great airflow at full speed, it has to be said, but it was very, very quiet, especially at 1000 RPM, where it was also quieter than the, than the Noctua fan, but the Noctua had much better airflow and efficiency at full speed. So the ID cooling fan, um, I'm pretty disappointed with this one, given that it actually felt really well made and it has RGB lighting, a digital RGB lighting at that as well. Um, and those and those funky uh, radiator uh, screws for radiators as well, but it had poor airflow at both 1000 RPM and full speed. Uh, however, it was also very, very quiet. Um, you do seem to pay a premium for the RGB lighting here though. But if you're happy with, you know, sort of middling airflow and you want the RGB lighting in a slim fan, it is potentially worth considering and it won't quite break the bank at $15 per fan. So finally then, we've got the Silverstone and that is the FN124. Poor airflow at full speed, unfortunately, and also not amazing at 1000 RPM either. Um, but it was very, very quiet, mainly because it wasn't shifting much air. Not great value though, at $15, there are some other significantly better fans for that money. So, thanks for listening to this roundup of slim 120mm fans. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it informative. And as I've already mentioned, the links to all the fans you can see in the description below if you want to uh, check out the best performing ones such as the Noctua, the Arctic, uh, the car, the Scythe, Kaze Flex, etc, etc. They're all listed down below so you can just click through and buy those and they are affiliate links as well so you're supporting the channel. I just get a small cut out of those fees from Amazon but everything is obviously appreciated and I'll be back with more awesome videos like this looking at a whole bunch of other hardware in group tests and uh, a lot of it small form factor focused of course but a few other things as well and uh, back with lots more videos soon. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.